The Ajuran Sultanate is a Somali empire that ruled the Horn of Africa for 400 years be between the 13th and 17th century. They were known to be the only hydraulic empire or water dynasty in Africa, apart from ancient Egypt, in that their authority came from the control they exercised on the water supply of the region they governed. During their reign, the Ajuran rulers built large limestone wells throughout the Horn of Africa, which served the nomadic Oromo and Somali populations under their rule. The wells were regulated by the central Ajuran authority, which settled disputes between nomads, which in turn maintained stability and prosperity in the region. The Ajuran dynasty also extensively developed agriculture and farming through hydraulic engineering. They built large and complex irrigation systems taking their source in the Shebele and Juba rivers, which brought water to inland plantations through a system of irrigation ditches known as Kilio. The irrigation system was composed by an elaborate network of dams, dikes, and levees that controlled the water flow during the various seasons of the year. Agriculture was supported by a specific land measurement system that determined the appropriate size of a farm, and it followed the complex dual lunar Somali calendar, Gur spring and Haga summer being the main seasons to grow crops. Centralized state farms in Afgoye, Bardere and Kismayo cities provided the empire with an abundance of food and trading goods. Vasco da Gama, the Portuguese explorer and the first European to reach India, passed by Mpodishu in the 15th century and wrote the following. It was a large city with houses of four or five stories high and big palaces in its center and many mosques. Duarte Barbosa, who was on the first expedition to circumnavigate the world, led by his brother-in-law Ferdinand Magellan, also said the following. Many ships from the kingdom of Cambaya in India sailed to Mogadishu with clothes and spices for which they in return received gold, wax and ivory. Barbosa also highlighted the abundance of meat, wheat, barley, horses, and fruit on the coastal markets, which generated enormous wealth for the merchants. The Ajuran Empire established trading and diplomatic ties across the Old World, particularly in Asia with the Ottoman Empire and the Ming Dynasty. The ruler of the Somali Ajuran Empire sent ambassadors to China, the most notable one being Seyid of Mogadishu, who became the first African man to set foot in China in recorded history. Seyid of Mogadishu established a small Somali community in China, where he studied the Mandarin language and created the first dictionary to translate Mandarin to a native African language like Somali. In return, Emperor Yang Le, the third emperor of the Ming Dynasty, dispatched one of the largest fleets in history to trade with the Somali nation. The fleet, under the leadership of the famed Hue Muslim Zhang He, arrived in Mogadishu while the city was at its peak in economic and social vibrancy. Along with gold, frankincense, and fabrics, Zhang He brought back the first ever African wildlife to China, which included hippos, giraffes, and gazelles. Seyid is said to have afterwards traveled across the Muslim world and visited Bengal. During his stay at a mosque on the west coast of India, he encountered the most renowned traveler of the Old World, Ibn Battuta. According to scholar Peter Jackson, Said might have, during this occasion, shared with Battuta accounts of his travels in China and detailed the political landscapes and succession of the Huan dynasty, information which Battuta would eventually add in his famous chronicles. The Ajuna Empire attracted many immigrants from Arabia, Persia, Yemen, India, and even Spanish Muslims and Jews which were fleeing the religious persecution of the Inquisition in Spain. Those new communities were well integrated in the empire, with many of them enjoying economic opportunities and a high social status. The Ajuran Empire was also a military power in the region that built many castles and fortresses along the coast to protect itself against invaders. It successfully resisted an Oromo invasion from the west and a Portuguese incursion from the east during the Galmedu and the Azure and Portuguese Wars. In the 16th century, the Portuguese, led by Tristão da Cunha, attacked the Azure capital city of Berawa with an armada of 16 ships. 
Badawa resisted the attack thanks to its fortress and its battalion of 4,000 men, comprised of archers with fire arrows. But the Portuguese eventually breached the fortress wall through a weak point and then sacked and put the city to the torch. After Badawa, Tristao set sail for Mogadishu, which was the richest city on the East African coast. But word had spread of what happened in Badawa, and a large troop mobilization had taken place. Many horsemen, soldiers, and battleships in defense positions were now guarding the city. The Portuguese fleet, encountering this show of force, opted to retreat and sail for the island of Socotra instead of attacking Mogadishu. It is not clear if Tristo da Cunha perished in a haphazard storm attack on Mogadishu despite the advice of his officers or if he managed to flee with the rest of his men. The Ajurian Portuguese wars continued over the next several decades, and with help from their ally, the Ottoman Empire, the Somalis managed to defy the Portuguese economic monopoly of the Indian Ocean, and even managed to drive them out from several important cities such as Pate, Mombasa, and Kilwa. The Ajurian army began acquiring muskets and cannons that would transit through the port of Mogadishu. Horses used for military purposes were also bred in the inlands, and numerous stone fortifications were erected to provide shelter for the army in the coastal districts. In each province, the soldiers were under the supervision of a military commander known as an emir, and the coastal areas in the Indian Ocean trade were protected by Somali navy. The Azure and Empire slowly declined in power at the end of the 17th century, which paved the way for the ascendance of new Somali powers like the Hirab Imamat, also known as the Yaqubi dynasty. The catalyst for the rebellion against the Azure Empire was the heavy tax system they imposed on their subjects and the economic and social pressure they exercised on the other Somali vassal clans and their nobility. The Somali Azuran Empire had an central influence on the world trade for more than 400 years with an influence and a heritage that extended outside of the Horn of Africa. The empire established its own colony in Mozambique to mine gold and funded one of the oldest harbors documented in southern Africa in So Falak, literally meaning go dig in Somali, today known as the city of Nova Sofala in Mozambique. The empire is also reputed to have founded the first ruling dynasty of the Maldives, the Hilale dynasty, as well as a Somali colony on the Mali Atoll, the Maldive Islands.